Thank you, Dean Vandenbout. Thank you to the entire college and faculty and staff for making today possible. Thank you to the alumni and parents and friends who are about to get very loud for all of you. And to the class of 2023, congratulations to you all. Now, the speaker at an occasion such as this is given a few different tasks to accomplish, uh, to leave you with some inspirational or at least useful advice to be memorable, I hope, and especially to not talk for very long. Uh, if it's a choice between those options, I will definitely try to err on the side of not talking too long because not only is the College of Natural Sciences the best college at the University of Texas at Austin, it's the biggest. <laughs> All of you have so rightly earned the right to walk across this stage today. But perhaps if I'm lucky, I will also leave you with some memorable advice. And if that is the case, I only ask that you tag me when you share it. Thank you. There are always a few predictable cliches that uh, dominate speeches like this in any given year. And for this year, it's basically a requirement that I bring up AI, artificial intelligence. So let's just get that out of the way. You really have to wonder why even have someone like me up here when each of you could just ask ChatGPT to write you a perfectly customized commencement speech with exactly the advice that you want to hear, even delivered in the style of your favorite celebrity, the minister of culture himself, or Carl Sagan, or even Yoda could be doing this for you. But it's crucial to remember that science is not just about finding the answers that we want to hear. It's about asking questions. It's about being imaginative and about pushing the boundaries of what we know and what we think is possible. I have to be honest, ChatGPT wrote everything since Yoda, but it sounds pretty good. This explosion in technologies like artificial intelligence has had me thinking quite a bit about what makes us special, what makes you special. I mean, all of us deep down in our guts I think really feel there is something special about being a person, about being a human you know, with a brain and a body and an epidermis and, and cool hats. But lately it feels like as soon as you put your finger on the thing that you think that's what makes people special, then you find out that someone has already trained an AI to do that very thing. Faster, maybe not better yet, but maybe better soon. I mean, consider a guy like Isaac Newton, who's probably the last person to have lived, who essentially knew everything there was to know about science in their time. Nowadays, of course, there are people who do understand quite a bit about quite a lot, but let's face it, at best, we might get to know two or three hairs on science's head in our time as students and scientists. We have very ironically gotten so good at this whole science business that there is frankly too much to know. And if someone ever calls you a know-it-all, you can tell them it's actually impossible to know it all, which is the most know-it-all thing you could possibly tell them. <laughs> despite all of that, despite there being too much to actually know, as we speak, there are large rooms full of blinking lights and silicon chips teaching themselves the entire corpus of human knowledge. They can not only learn, they can recall information faster than any of us could ever dream of without the need to take a break to eat or go to the bathroom or tend to our kids or our mental health or just sit down and watch a football game. And then the machines that we hook them to can do the work of science more precisely than the finest surgeons, than lab technicians, than any electrical gizmo maker they're getting very good at doing the work of science, and you really have to wonder how long it is until they don't need us to tell them what to work on anymore. And there's no one alive, much less on this stage or in these seats, who has the foggiest idea how this will change your world. Many of you might be looking around right now at the other majors and saying, well, maybe they can be replaced, but not me but they're looking at you and saying the same thing. So hearing all of that, maybe a few of you are reconsidering this whole graduation thing, but you're already in your seats. I'm afraid it's too late. But I do think there is one thing that you can do that's irreplaceable. I do have some good news. 
There is one uniquely special and human skill that each and every one of you who will walk across this stage today shares. And many of you are going to exercise this skill today or in the coming weeks, or perhaps you've already practiced this as you visit with family and friends and they tell you how proud they are of you. And then suddenly you get the question, the question. So what are you gonna do now? And though this might not be what comes out of your mouth, maybe you're pretending to have a plan, but deep down inside, many of you will probably be saying, I don't know. It's okay not to know. In fact, you should be proud to say, I don't know. Because you young scientists are the intellectual descendants of a long line of people who said, I don't know. I kind of worry that maybe we've accidentally fooled you into thinking it's what you do know that counts. I mean, we give you grades and tests, and I don't think I don't know was typically an acceptable answer on those. We made you carry gigantic textbooks full of facts. We built Wikipedia. We put Google on literally everything so that any moment you could be drowning yourself in stuff we know. Now, there's a great deal you do need to know to be a scientist, but that is not what makes you special. Because like I said, the computers have already got us beat in the fact-gathering department. It's not even close. What makes you special is to achieve what you have to get here, to walk across this stage. You must have gotten very comfortable with saying, I don't know, even if you didn't realize it. Because that is the essential ingredient that makes science happen. There is another little secret I want to let you in on. The little piece of paper you're going to get in the mail in a nice, pretty envelope isn't what gives you the right to call yourself a scientist. Mine's still sitting on the shelf in the envelope it came in. What gives you that right is being willing to stand at the edge of what is known with your toes hanging over the edge, staring into this infinite black expanse of everything we don't know, and saying, yeah, this is the place for me. Are you willing to stand there and say that? Because if you are, there's only one thing you have to do next. As you stare out into all of that unknown, and someone asks you the question, so what are you going to do now? You tell them as loud as you can, I don't know, and then take one step forward. And when your foot lands, you will push out that edge of what is known just a little farther. That is what it means to be a scientist. You know what you know, and you're not afraid to say, I don't know. You can see where knowledge doesn't yet exist, and then you can go create the knowledge to fill that void. That is something that the machines with all the blinky lights and silicon brains cannot do. If you ask an AI bot what it doesn't know, it says, it doesn't know the information it hasn't gotten access to yet. But it doesn't know that there is just knowledge out there that we flat out haven't discovered yet. Being a scientist is knowing that. Now, I don't want to put any more pressure on you than your parents and the rest of society already has, but you are graduating at an absolutely critical time. It's a time of immense division, of disinformation, some of humanity's most frustrating mental weaknesses are laid bare for everyone to see in prime time, viral on social media, sometimes in front of our very eyes. And the causes of this are many, but at the root of so many of these is a fear of what we don't know. The world needs each and every one of you, and we need you to practice and practice this skill this thing that makes you special as a scientist, of being the, the one who will ask questions, who will consider deeply, who will listen, and who, when the facts and evidence demands it, will change your mind. Because for our Stone Age brains, that is one of the hardest things to do. Now, whether you become a doctor or a lab technician or a dinosaur hunter or a lawyer or a chef, or a teacher, as long as you continue to practice this skill, you will be a scientist, no matter what it says you do on your LinkedIn page. You have been gifted this special skill, 
by your lifetime as a question asker, as an answer finder, as a humble knowledge seeker. And you will meet many people who don't have this skill. Some of them left it behind in childhood. Some of them maybe never had it to begin with. But when you look at them, remember that the only difference between you is you know what they don't know. You know that the journey to knowledge is not something that leads us into a destination. It's a journey that leads us out into a dark and sometimes uncomfortable place. But that is where new knowledge is found. And you cannot get there if you aren't willing to say, I don't know. What we do know will always be finite. And what we don't know is infinite. So at the very least, if you're interested in job security, the I don't know business sounds pretty good. Well, that is the hopefully memorable and inspirational part out of the way. We don't have much time for actual advice, but seeing as it's a science graduation, I guess I should think of something evidence-based. Um, Wear sunscreen, that's an important one. Uh, my, my dad reminded me before my wedding to take care of my teeth. This is the last set we get. Uh, and of course, hook them horns. Congratulations, class of 2023.